if you are a high vibe single woman who wants practical dating advice in a way that honors your spirituality, you are not going to want to miss this video. Love. I'm Carissa Montu, sixth generation certified energy healer and creator of the Soul Love Method course, helping high vibe single women heal their hearts and attract love. And today we are going to talk about an honest review of the Tao of Dating. All right, so what is the Tao of Dating? The Tao of Dating is a dating manual for successful, smart, spiritual women. Uh, the author is Dr. Ali Bainazir. I hope I'm saying that right. He is a certified clinical hypnotherapist, and he has, in addition to his tons of impressive academic credentials, he also has a very keen understanding of the spiritual and energetic dynamics in relationships and the dynamic of male-female energy. Um, who is this book for? This book is for high vibe single women, really. I recommend it to my private clients all the time. It's written for high vibe women who either can't seem to find the right guy or come across the right guy. I hate to say find because it's not your job to go find a guy. That's not how that works. But it's it's more of a thing of like they are you're not really seeing many of them in your life. Um if you keep ending up in relationships with the wrong guys, um, if you keep having relationships that don't last, or if you have this feeling like you just want to give up entirely on dating, uh, this book is for you and it's going to be very helpful for you. You're going to like this book a lot if you're really committed to practicing deep self-love and so you want to find a way of dating that honors that. This book is wonderful for that. It's also um, a book that you're going to really like if you understand the law of attraction, but you want something that's a little bit more scientifically based and clear cut to guide you in the dating world. Um, a couple things that make this book super unique. It's heart centered, but it's also science based and very practical. You know, it's a very good fit for the way that I work with my clients because I work with my clients in those ways as well. I work in, uh, we work in objective reality together and we work on the energetic healing level together. So if that is your jam, then you're going to love this book. Um, it's also, an another thing that makes it really unique is that it is written from a male perspective and I need to kind of put a little bit of a, put this in context. It's written from the perspective of healthy masculinity, okay? Uh, and I want you to just be aware that there are a lot of, of so-called you know, love gurus and dating gurus out there that are claiming to give you like the real deal of what men really want. And they'll tell you things like, um, if you're over this age, just give it up. You know, if you're over this weight, you should just give it up. Like those kinds of things. Um, anything that, that triggers in you a sense of scarcity uh, a sense of fear, like my time is running out, there aren't many men in the world uh, th that would be attracted to me. Anything that, that makes you feel that you're not valuable, anything where after you've received the information, you feel your spirit sink is not something that you need to be investing time and energy in, and it is not something that you need to give credibility to. It is not something that you need to allow someone to speak over you. So when you're looking for information, it should edify your spirit. It should build up your spirit. It should remind you about your worthiness and your value and that you are lovable. It should not be tearing down your spirit. If someone is giving you dating advice and it is speaking destruction into your, your life, speaking fear into your spirit, speaking scarcity over your dating life, over your love life, that is not something for you to give any kind of credibility or attention or put any stock in. Okay, love? So that's important uh, to understand as we go along. So that's one of the many reasons why I love this book, The Doubt of Dating by 
Dr. Bynazir. It is so the opposite of that. Um, it's so centered around self-love and attracting what you deserve to have, which is a deep, soulful, stand the test of time committed relationship in your life. So I want to share... Uh, and, and so healthy masculinity is something that, that is a huge feature of this book, the perspective of healthy masculinity, okay? Uh, some of my favorite parts of this book I wanted to share. In chapter five, he talks about um, page 97, chapter five. You can't really see here, so I'll just tell you about it. <laughs> he talks about how to spot bad boys, and he gives 10 specific ways <laughs> to spot the bad boys and separate them out from the good guys. One of the ways he talks about is being just a tad too smooth, uh, thrill-seeking types of behavior, moving things along too quickly. Uh, he talks about a few different things, general evasiveness, stuff like that. Um, then he also, in the same chapter, he talks about 10 ways to spot good guys. Uh, one of the re things that he gives is a sense of purpose, um, a strong internal compass, um, acceptance, those kinds of things. So he goes into those much more deeply in the book, which you'll be able to see. Another thing I love about this book is that in chapter 8, he shares this great table uh, that talks about where you would come across different types of men. And you probably can't really see it that well, but no, because it's just there's just no way that you're going to be able to see it. <laughs> but he talks about like if the type of person that you want to meet is spiritual, you can go to, you know, Omega Institute, special classes that they host at yoga studios, uh, things like that. If he is adventurous and outdoorsy, Sierra Club meetings, scuba classes, rock climbing gyms, um, intellectual, university coffee shops, on-campus lectures, book readings, scientific or philosophical talks, you know, different things like that. Cultured, if you want to meet a lit uh, someone who's particularly, you know, loves to read, if you want to, who's literate, if you want to meet someone who's artistic, um, civic-minded, affluent, a particular nationality, particular ethnicity. He goes through all those things. He's got this great table laid out with great ideas uh, for places where you might cross paths with this particular type of gentleman. Um, another thing that I really love is that he breaks down kind of like um, what he calls the three C's of an optimal venue. So when you're actually like dating someone or you're actually getting to meet someone, there are three things that make the environment a really great environment for that to happen. And he shares those three things in this book so that you can look for those types of places. Uh, or so that you can pay attention, actually, when you're just in those types of places is probably a better way of looking at it. Because honestly, we don't want to be the moth. You know, when you think about being the flame, right? Think about being the flame. You know, the flame doesn't run around wondering if people uh, want to look at it, if things are attracted to it, right? The flame doesn't wonder, am I bright and shiny enough? The flame just stands still and burns really brightly, you know, and it attracts like crazy. And a lot of times it's really about turning your light on. You know, it's not as much about searching or, you know, it's not about getting your hustle on in the dating world. It's not about that. It's about attracting. It's about getting your energy right. You know, um, Rumi says you don't, it, our job is not, our task is not to seek love, but to seek out all the obstacles within ourselves that we have built to love. So that's a lot of what's going on with your healing is that you do your healing work and then you attract the person to you. And this is a great way to sort of combine, this is my healing work that I'm doing and this is how I'm going to apply it practically in the world of dating if you want to get out there and do that. A lot of the women that I work with don't want to date. They prefer to attract someone and then kind of like just get to know that person um, a little bit more deeply until they're ready to make a commitment to that person. But usually they'll recognize that that person is the soulmate person for them pretty much off the bat. Um, because dating is not something that comes very easily to women. Men are very good at dating because they understand that dating is not a relationship. Dating is uh, about getting to know someone 
in a fun and enjoyable way. And you can date more than one person at a time. Um, you do not have to be exclusive. You are not exclusive and committed when you're dating. You can date three people ethically um, and not be, and that's just dating. But a lot of times women don't think like that. We think in terms of relationships. So if we go on one date with someone, we think of ourselves as being in a relationship with them when really dating is how we get to know them so that we can figure out if we want to commit to them and go deeper. We tend to instantly commit and think of ourselves as being in a relationship with them already, which is why we get so upset when they don't ask us for a second or third date. You know, we don't, we're not thinking of it like we're wondering why we weren't chosen instead of standing still, keeping our eyes open and doing the choosing, you know, um, and to do the choosing, you've got to take in the information, right? You've got to spend the time. You've got to pay attention to what's happening. You've got to keep your heart still and your eyes open, right? Um, so this is a great book for figuring out how to kind of, um, how to do that, how to manage that in the dating world without um, having to jump through a bunch of hoops and change who you are, <laughs> you know, from uh, being able to do this from a place of deep self-love and, um, and power and feminine energy. So those are some really great things I love about this book. Um, in chapter 11, he describes three ways that we create passion, that women create passion. Um, and then he also, in the very, um, in chapter eight, he talks about how the different kinds of long distance relationships and how you can tell if a long distance relationship has a chance of being successful um, or if it doesn't. Um, and then my very one of my very favorite things in this book is that in the very last chapter, he talks about how to actually sustain a loving relationship. A lot of times um, I will work with women who feel like the end goal is getting into the relationship and that is a beautiful, powerful, joyful thing that happens. Um, but there is also sustaining the relationship over time. And if we have done a lot of healing to get to the place of attracting healthy love, then we usually need to continue our healing so that we can sustain healthy love. So that's one of the things that I love about this book so much is that in that last chapter, he talks about ways to do that. So now I would love to hear from you. Was this review helpful for you? Was this video helpful for you? Let me know in the comments and give it a like. Um, and for more tips on how to heal your heart and attract love, subscribe. Click the pick and subscribe. So remember that self-love is the best love. So love you first, love you best, and all other kinds of love will flow to you. Take care.